Okay, so maybe not all of you follow my, my build of this plane, but I've gotten to a point where I'm trying to prepare my 912 IS engine for an engine start so that I can maybe get this thing flying one day. But uh, in preparing my engine, I got all my, my oil lines together and all the basically plumbing and electrical done. Uh, and I called Phil, not Phil Lockwood, his name is Dean, I can't remember his last name, but uh, Dean who's the uh, main technical uh, advisor at Lockwood Aviation and asked them, what do I need to do before I start this thing? Because it's an expensive piece of equipment and before I start the machine, I don't want to have anything blow up. And basically I sat, I, I sat with Dean on the phone. They have uh, technical hours. If you guys are ever have any questions about Rotax engine maintenance, call Lockwood uh, between their technical hours. I think it's between two and three and uh, like nine and 10. And you can talk to Dean and he's super duper knowledgeable, super helpful. So anyway, I talked to Dean for about 20 minutes about what exactly I need to do before I start this engine. And one of the things he brought up is this right here. This right here is the service bulletin for uh, purging the lubrication system prior to engine start or after any, uh, there's actually a list of things. Right, so if you, for the first engine run it says, after you know an overhaul you need to do this, and after any time you actually open the lubrication system, uh, remove the oil pump, cooler, or any suction line. So this is a pretty common procedure that you use to purge the oil system so that these, these engines have lubrication prior to starting, because that's, that's one easy way to blow up an engine, is not to have a lubricant. So today we're going to go through the, uh, the process involved for purging the oil system and um, doing so without a special compressor, uh, basically, or an air fitting to go on the uh, oil tank or uh, to purge the uh, system out. So this is actually for all the 912 series engines. It's 912i, 915i, the 912s, ULS, and 914. So all the Rotax 9 series engines go through the same process. So we're going to go do, do down the checklist and make it happen. Okay, so first step on the checklist, it says to remove the oil return line to the oil tank. And so there's an, this one's out, it says out on it, and this one's in. So the return line is the in port on the actual oil line. So I'm gonna go grab a wrench and pull this actual fitting off. Okay, so this is disconnected. They do say that you need to put a cup on this or some form of container because they say it's rare, but it is possible for oil to actually come all the way through the system and out this line. So I'm gonna find something to contain it. And then I actually have to put an airtight cap on this A8 fitting. Fortunately, the engine came with a couple, so I'll pop those on and we'll go to the next step. I don't have a cup, but I do have this empty oil container to try and capture the oil if it does come out this other side. Now, I mean, I should have done this earlier because I've already spilled oil all over the floor, but this is a good idea, especially if you're in a place like a hangar and you don't want to make a mess. Okay, I'm just gonna let that hang there um, and go on to the next step. Okay, so what Dean said and what also the service instruction said is that you have to make sure you remove all the spark plug connectors and one spark plug from every cylinder. The reason why you want to turn the spark plug connectors off, pull the spark plug connectors off, because you actually have to rotate the engine with both lanes on and power, basically, to the engine, um, the, the momentary start power, to read off of the ECU. There is potentially a possibility of the engine firing. If I take all the spark, spark plugs out, it basically reduces that possibility to zero, because there's no possibility for spark. Um, you know, an act, it would take an act of God to start an engine without spark plugs. The reason why you pull one spark plug from every engine uh, cylinder is because um, it actually reduces the amount of resistance on the stroke and you can turn much more quickly and build up pressure in the engine. So I'm gonna pull all the spark plug connectors off and then we'll pull one spark plug. I'll pull the top spark plug from every cylinder. So that's all the top spark plugs. I'm gonna go run around and do all the bottom, and then we'll pull these top ones out in a second. So 
So yeah, the top ones are a lot harder to pull off than the bottom ones. Bottom ones I could pull right off by hand, but I had a hard time with these top ones. Definitely had to use some form of leverage to, to get it off of there. All right, come to another dilemma, classic for building planes. Um, to pull a spark plug, I think you need either a 5 8 or a 3 16 I'm not sure. It could also be a 16 millimeter. I, I'm, I have a 15 millimeter and a 17 and I need a deep socket to get there. So I mean, I gotta go run to the store and find deep sockets. Uh, I guess I'll do imperial deep sockets and see if I can pull these off. But I definitely can't get in there without a long socket and I don't have a long socket. So I'm gonna put a pause on this and we'll come back to it and um, see if I can pull spark plug with the right, with the right tool. Okay, I'm back. So turns out in order to pull the spark plugs, the Rotax spark plugs on the 912 engines, if it's a Rotax spark plug, you need a 16 millimeter socket. Well, I had previously bought a, I'm sorry, you don't just need any normal 16 millimeter socket, you need a deep 16. So one that's long enough to get over the spark plug. Uh, I guess it's a nut on the spark plug. So I had bought a kit previously because I needed a number 19 socket for the, a deep 19 for the oil uh, outlet port on the bottom and, or sorry, inlet port. And it's missing, it doesn't have a 16 in it, so it goes from 15 to 17. And, you know, of course I would need a 16. Anyway, working on these German engines, it's definitely a good idea to have uh, a set of metric uh, deep sockets, because you have to do that for the oil port and then the spark plug port. Anyway, I'm gonna pull these four top spark plugs with the deep 16 and then my brother just showed up so we can actually turn the engine over and get the oil flowing. All right, so uh, in my experience with chainsaws, which is limited, uh, you don't want to foul the end of these or spark them or uh, like hit them on anything. So I'm going to put them in a a delicate box so that they don't get marred up. Okay, going down the checklist. So all the spark plug connectors are pulled. We open the Inlet port, is it inlet? Yeah, inlet port on the engine. Put a, or on the oil tank, we put a cover on the exposed line so it doesn't drip. See the oil return line's been connected. We pulled all the spark plugs. Connectors, we pulled four spark plugs. Okay, so there's two options. There's an option for this uh, special compressor fitting with a gauge on it that you can put on here and, and sort of uh, meter, I think six PSI through the system. I don't have that, so it says you can go and do a second option, which is turning the engine by hand to uh, make sure that there's oil flowing through the system. So there is oil in here. I put three quarts. Um, I'll probably put another quart in after I start turning it. Gosh, there's bugs everywhere. It's the horses next door. Um, so I'll put another quart in before we're done. But uh, I have my brother here. He's gonna watch the gauge and hold the power on while I turn the engine. He's scared he's gonna chop his hands off. So I'll be the one taking all the risk. It says uh, it's gonna take 20 turns, depending on installation, it might take up to 60 turns. So what we're doing here is we're turning the engine until the first pressure indication on the oil pressure gauge of engine instrumentation in the cockpit. So I turn the engine, he watches the gauges and tells me when the pressure comes up for the first time. And that basically means oil has made it through the pump and to the pressure sensor, which I think is on the back side of this engine. I don't know. Don't ask me. Okay, and then after that, it goes through the start procedures. I'm not starting this engine until, well, one, my uh, dad would be very offended if I started it without him, so. He put a stipulation, it is Father's Day, happy Father's Day. He put a stipulation that I don't start the engine until he's there, I agree, I'll wait. And second, I'm doing um, Lockwood's aviation or uh, Rotax 912 series maintenance class. So they actually have this full week long course that you can take and you go down to Sebring Airport and Dean, who is the wizard of Rotax, 
maintenance. He walks, there's, there's basically two different courses. There's a installation, a maintenance, actually three different courses. Installation, maintenance, and then there's the last course, which is specific to the fuel injected series. So I'm doing Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Um, Wednesday and Thursday, I think, are for maintenance particularly, and I'm, I'm not doing that. Maybe at some point in time, but I'm just mostly covering the installation. So anyway, we're not starting it until then, which might be two weeks from now, but we're gonna at least make sure there's oil sitting in the system. Ready? Just make sure everything's disconnected. <laughs> okay, so the way we're gonna start this, I've charged the battery all the way up, because I killed the battery before. Um, I'm gonna boot the system up. I've already configured the engine page to display all of the cor correct gauges that we're looking for. Come on, Garmin. Turn lay a and, lane A and B on. You have to have both of them, I believe. And then what my brother's gonna do here, oh crap. What are you gonna watch, Georgie? You're gonna watch, see that says oil tie right there? While I turn, as soon as you see that number change, you tell me and I'll stop turning because that's when we have oil running through the system. We got oil pressure. That's what we came here for. Four, three, two, one. Cool. You can pull the power off. And then this is lane switches off. Maybe on it's off. Yeah. Is there a question whether somebody who's six foot four can fit inside of a kit fox? Sorry, six foot five. I don't want to shrink you down. Let's see how much how much how much headroom does he have? None. Legroom, nice Crocs, super, super stylish. What about the uh, sweet tiger shirt? <laughs> okay, so in step seven it says, turn the engine by hand, the normal direction of rotation, which I did, until first pressure indication. So we got it up to one PSI, just for to confirm it, I got up to four PSI, so that did actually indicate. I had to turn it pretty quickly. I think Dean, I remember Dean saying one revolution per second but call him and ask. And uh, it was way more than 20 turns, so that was fake news. Then it says uh, restore engine to, or aircraft to normal operating condition. So what I'm gonna do is I'll put everything back together. I'll reconnect the oil lines, put the spark plugs back in. I gotta figure out what the torque is and then reconnect all the spark plug connectors and this will be ready to start with the exception of my prop mounting, which I'll talk about in another video. So here we go. Oh, oh look, there's some oil that came out. Okay, just in case you were curious, I actually did push some oil through the system there. Not, not much, maybe a 
a cup or less. Okay, just looked at the Rotax Owners Forum. According to that, the torque value for the 912 spark plugs is 142 inch pounds. So I've got my little torque wrench here. They specifically say not to use a torque wrench measured in foot pounds because it doesn't have the level of precision that you need. So um, I'm gonna use the 142 inch pounds on this little guy and get this these uh, spark plugs torqued back to spec. That's 42. That sets. All right, so our oil level's good. It's maybe a little high. We got it to the top of the, I'm at the top of the upper mark of the dipstick. So I put four quarts in. They provided four quarts with the engine firewall forward kit. So I used all four. It's probably a little high. I think, uh, remember, I remember Dean saying that was okay to have the oil a little bit high. Um, but I'm going to this class before I start the engine, so I'm not too worried about it. So this oil that purged all the way through, I'm not gonna put it back inside because it looks like I actually have enough for, for what I needed. I'd imagine three and a half quarts was actually what I needed, but I put all four quarts in there and it, and it worked out well. Okay, so that was service instruction 912I004R1 for the 912IS. This is good for all the Rotax series for purging the lubrication system. So this is something that needs to be done before you run your engine for the first time to make sure you have your lubrication, after you reinstall the engine or overhaul, anytime you drain the oil system for maintenance work or uh, pull the oil pump off, uh, and anytime the actual oil system is disconnected. All right, that's it for this one. Um, as I said, I'm not starting this engine. I was originally gonna start it on my own, but I'm not starting this engine until I go through that installation class in Sebring. I'll put a link up to Lockwood's website, but, uh, Anyway, so maybe in two weeks I'll have a video out on the engine start, which I'm pretty excited about. And I think I'm moving it to the airport by then. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is helpful. I, don't, I couldn't find anything on the Rotax 9 series for purging the system. So hopefully this is a useful piece of information for other people to learn from. See you next time.